of Islam as part of the scholars of their private knowledge, right? But he says wow. that hieroglyphic magic, a system of language encoding that can engineer consciousness. And that's exactly what we're seeing within the Arabic language and the, of the Quran. Language is... encoding to engineer consciousness. Yeah, 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 precisely that. It's just, I'm just trying to think at the same time, because I'm just trying to look at all of this holistically now, um, everything we've learned so far, I'm just seeing that I can really see the way they've adopted the concept of like the, the Malik or like the, you know, this whole religion where the worship was based on a war god and then you take on those traits. But so they've got that going on. They've got like the amalgamation to worship the moon god, but to make it a monotheistic like facade. Um, but then at the same time, they're so heavily into the esoteric. So because remember, I mentioned that the two, the split, right? Yeah. So regular Muslims have to just follow the rules and the Imams have to enforce the rules of the Sharia. Yeah. On the other side of the divide is the esoteric. And that's purely for the, for the senior scholars, for them right. to, to commune with Allah, for them to, wow. to basically they want to become, uh, okay, so the term is, so Muhammad was insan of Kamil, which translates as insane as a camel. <laughs> Okay. I will never so, forget that now. Perfect man. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the perfect man. Okay. You could think of it as possibly the perfected man. Uh, sure. Okay. And you'll notice the very same concept is actually present within both communism and within Nazism. Okay. Jeez, the perfect okay. man. The very same. So within 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 Nazism, you had the, the Ubermensch. Okay. So in Nazism, mm -hmm. you had the Ubermensch. Right? Mm -hmm. The superman, the overman, the ultimate man, the supreme man, the perfected man as well. The same concept. The same concept right. was present in communism as well, believe it or not. Right. So in fact, in fact, in 1919, Hitler was a communist and obviously national socialism, Nazi, Nazi means mm -hmm. national socialism, right? National mm -hmm. socialist as opposed to international socialists. And in fact, there was the, the Nazis originally put out lots of propaganda that stated that they are very much in alignment with Karl Marx, but they had to withdraw all of that propaganda because the communists were not popular in Germany. So they had to hide that aspect of their allegiance. The fact that they were socialists, they called right leaning, but no, their politics is entirely left leaning. Mm -hmm. But that's it, the same concept of the perfected man. Now, this idea, uh, this idea, Hitler received from a Sufi. Right? There were, there, there's a major Sufi influence on Hitler who inspired him to do a number of things. So, so Hitler got a lot of his ideas, oddly enough, from a Sufi Muslim, right? Yeah. Who lived with him, right? Who was a very close friend of his and a very strong influence on him. So so they want to become the insan al Kamal. They want to become perfected as well. Right? So Lloyd, just a question, and forgive my ignorance for if this is a really basic question, but when we see um, Sufi communities around the world, obviously they vary as well. Like if I take like, you know african sufis versus tunisian Suf uh, sorry versus like turkish sufis uh who are you know on face value they are following more of like i don't know rumi molana rumi's teachings and they're more into like the whirling dervish aspects um and then like sufis in iran have their own thing going on every sufi community is like different in their practices and i i know that the overreaching practice they have like forms of like vicar and stuff where you're constantly in the remembrance of god and they're trying to harness like a point mm -hmm. of um what would you call it like a trance-like state almost to feel that communion with god is that that's my interpret that's my experience with sufism like that but when you talk to me and you say the word sufi what you're referring to is actually something also way beyond that or is it safe to assume that even these lay sufis know that what what branch or like which aspects of islam they know so well compared to other muslims who don't indulge in that if that makes sense hmm. okay so i wish the answer was easy but let me try so first of all in san al kamil in mysticism the concept of the mm. perfect man all right so you've right. got that there and there's a long mm. story attached to that now there are sufis and there are sufis just like there are there are so the Sufi texts, the 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 Sharia texts, the Islamic legal texts, have a lot to say about fake Sufis, but bad Sufis, who okay. so 
So first of all, a Sufi is completely beholden to the Sharia. He must be 100% Sharia compliant to the law, to the fiqh. He right. must be completely compliant. Only then, once he's completely compliant, then he has the, has the right to engage in the deeper esoteric occult aspects of Islam. But he has to, he has to, he has to be perfect in both. Right? Okay. He has to walk both paths accurately. The lay Muslim only has access to the lower levels of the Sharia following the mm -hmm. law of the fiqh, right? Now, to become a Sufi, you have to be selected. Now, look, you can become a Sufi, but you might be an initiate, a low-level Sufi. There's like nine levels of Sufism. So you might be an idiot Sufi, a completely yeah. ignorant Sufi. Your, your, your teacher might realize you're not the right material. So he doesn't give you, he doesn't initiate into the higher levels. Which is why, sorry, that makes sense because Sufism puts such an emphasis on having, um, I think it's called like in, in Pakistan, we say a murshid or a beer, which is a teacher like that spiritual guide and they are the ones who kind of like hold your hand and work you into the into the fold i guess if you're yeah. now you of, can of read the, about the even the pair, even a pair. yeah now references to the pair even appear in the um in the tafsir but yes you're gonna have okay. you're gonna have that so so you see there has to be lineage you see you have to have, this is why everybody wants to be a sayyid because you see muhammad had a direct link to god right mm -hmm. and god's power flowed through him and if you were linked to muhammad then that power flows into you. And then if someone is linked to that descendant, that power flows into them. There's an unbroken lineage. That's why these isnads are so important because it's an unbroken lineage of holy power flowing through these people. And the mystics are the ones who can tap into this and you can link yourself to that scholar and then you can enter into the throne room of Allah. You can enter into Allah's presence and his presence will fill you and you become perfected. You become the perfect, powerful, ultimate ubermensch. Wow, this is blowing my mind because when I did the basic dive into Sufism, because I thought it was a lot more of the, the low level idiot Sufi stuff that you were talking about, um, there was this whole, the whole concept is the union with God. And I'd always under, like try and be like, oh, this is their version of like Nirvana or enlightenment, so to speak. But yeah, your that makes sense that your aim, they always say like our desire is almost, uh, it's like they, some people describe it as a marriage with God or as a union with God. Um, but that is the ultimate aim is to become the perfect man through yes. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. Yes, you're becoming, you see, you're becoming the perfect, you're becoming like a God. Mm, see, I see. You're becoming fully enlightened. You're becoming enlightened. You see, you okay. become one of, and I'm going to say this very carefully, you become one of the Illuminati. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. I'll say this very carefully. This is the greatest scholar in Islam after Muhammad himself, even greater than the four Imams. This is wow. Al-Ghazali. Okay, oh, yes, okay. Look what he wrote, Lloyd. The alchemy, alchemy. of happiness. <laughs> yes. Because now I'm going to show this and I'm going to be very careful in how I describe this. But understand, those who stopped short of complete illumination, okay? So there are those who believe they are illuminated, but they're not illuminated. He says, Muhammad Ghazali says, identified al Mutta with Allah. al Mutta is Muhammad, the prime principle of the universe. Wow, they identified, yeah. okay, identified Muhammad with Allah, okay, blah, 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 okay. But he says, he says this knowledge of the Amr, this knowledge of, of the command, of the word of command, of the word of power of Allah, contains much that is obscure and too difficult for most minds, unless you're one of us really smart scholars. Yeah. Sufi book, right? you're tapping into the right stuff yeah and then ghazali says that the perfect illuminati okay those mm -hmm. being the sufis the sufis okay. are the perfect illuminati because they are i.e right? the illuminated ones in this sense yeah they're illuminated by the power by the light of allah they carry yeah. allah's illumination that halo of illumination that power yeah right so because you see all of the holiness, like when you look at the halos of Jesus and you look at the halos of the, in the paintings of all the prophets and uh, sorry, yeah. of all the apostles, yeah. that power was given to them. That's the Holy Spirit, right? Which they got mm -hmm. from Jesus, basically. But Jesus now gets it from God and then he passes it down. And mm -hmm. if you look at the paintings of Muhammad, his entire body is engulfed in a halo of fire. 
and you see he then passes this fire down this this holiness this light this illumination so this so the sufis are the perfect illuminati and they perceive that al mutta the obeyed one that's that's muhammad is not more than allah okay but mm. oh, muhammad is related to allah as the sun is to the essential light so muhammad is part of allah this is shirk jeez that is pure shirk yes Understand. I mean, I mean, so, to, to the to the average Muslim, this sounds like complete yes. shirk. Yeah. So understand. So the, if you go further into this, this this gets really weird. But basically, and I imagine, so sorry, Lloyd, if sorry, if Allah is sure. the moon god, as we we know in in theory from this whole thing, and Muhammad is essential to him as the sun is to light, like he could essentially be like almost like the consort of Allah at this point. That's how the level of shirk this is going to. He's the vice regent. He's the vice, vice regent. He's the emissary Precisely. of Allah. Yes. Anyway, sorry, you were saying something very important. Because you see, Allah is now. Now, look, I know someone's going to say, I read the Quran, and the Quran says, I don't care. I, I really mm. don't care. I absolutely positively do not care what the Quran says most of the time. Um, see, Allah is aloof. Allah is not in creation. Allah can't even come into his creation. Yeah. Right? But look, the Quran says a lot of things. Okay, and Muslims will tell you the Quran says don't beat your wife. Yes, it does. Okay, so if they say, but Allah can't come, yeah, I don't care. No, he doesn't. Okay, so, you know, Islam's a religion of peace. No, it's not. Quran says a lot of things that I don't believe. So, but, so Allah is aloof, right? So what they mean is the primum mobile, okay, because he moves the primum mobile. See, they identified al mutta with Allah because he moves the primum mobile and all things. Now, Remember the planets turn in their orbits, yeah. right? The planets spin in their orbits. The earth turns on its axis, mm -hmm. right? Atoms move in our bodies. The ocean moves because of the moon's influence, right? All movement, okay, is because of the primum mobile. This is the power that exudes from Allah. But Allah is missing. Where is Allah? Nobody knows. Allah is aloof. So because Allah is missing in action, gone AWOL, who has to stand in Allah's place and move the universe, make the sun Muhammad. rise, make the moon rise, Muhammad. Do you understand mm -hmm. what this is saying? Yeah, yeah, okay, for sure. So effectively, Muhammad is the one orchestrating all of this. Yes. From what Muhammad's we understand here, not Allah spirit. himself. Yeah, the spirit of Muhammad, Correct. which is essentially part and parcel of the extension of Allah's holy divine So the divinity. Sufi want to tap into this power to be perfected like Muhammad. See, so Muhammad is Jesus, basically. He's the God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is mad. But um, if I do think, again, again, this could be such an ignorant question, so I'm sorry. But, like, when you talk about the fact that the Sufis had to be, like, follow the, sh the Sharia to the letter, you were saying, like, yeah. down to the last yeah. T. Um, but then if you look at some of the methods that they probably use to reach this state of like union or this desired state, then a lot of those look to the average Muslim again as being very un-Islamic and something that Sharia would not permit. So I'm guessing that's just all kind of passed over with the the methods that occultism or your your fear so look, or your bad worship. Sufis and your proper Sufis. The the, the okay. Sharia takes aim at bad Sufis a lot. They have okay. a lot to say about bad Sufis, about wannabe <sighs> Sufis, pretend Sufis, half Sufis, fake Sufis. There's a lot of they, they 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 rail against that kind of bad Sufism, okay. Okay. So you first, so, so yeah, a Sufi has to has to perfect himself in the Sharia as well as perfect himself in the spiritual aspects or the esoteric occult aspects of Islam, right? That's so, really yeah. interesting. Because well, sorry, uh, just last thing, the physical practice like the spinning makes you see. Okay, uh, short version. I'll try and be very brief. Keep your mm -hmm. thought warm. So your mind is rational, okay. Remember Allah. Islam is Gnostic. We've covered that before. Okay? The world is cursed. According to Islamic theology, the world is cursed. The world of matter mm -hmm. is cursed, just like the Gnostics believe. Your mind is a product of the material body. Therefore, it is, it is not something that can be trusted because the world is cursed. So therefore, you have to escape your rational mind. You have to move into what they call the pre-rational and the post-rational mind. Right? Okay. Outside of yeah. the pre-rational and the post-rational. So what you want to do is you want to use incantations. Remember the first, remember 20% of the Quran is supposed to be gibberish letters. All mm -hmm. these, these, these 
these gibberish letters, these gibberish phrases that mean nothing. Yasin, for no? example. <laughs> well, no, but those are just, well, no one knows what they mean. But remember, there's there's a portion of every verse. They say like 20% of like of like the chapters, the beginnings are like, no one knows what those words and phrases mean. You see? Yeah. Because if you were to read, I am perfectly rational, I am trapped in my mind, that's not going to help you reach nirvana. It's not going to help you escape your mind. So it's like counting sheep. It helps you to escape your rational mind and fall asleep, right? Oh, maybe so that's what the Alif La meme chant, is. You yeah. chant those. You chant those nonsense gibberish words to break out of your rational mind, to enter into the world of gibberish, which is post-rational. Okay, it's like having a, your own mantra to get into, yes. tap into that These state. These are mantras to escape into the pre-rational and post-rational states. And once you are freed from these chains of the rational, you can then begin to, in other words, once you've entered into, you can now enter into the realm of, with Allah. Oh my days. Lloyd, <laughs> you have just destroyed Sufism. And that one was for you, Josie Wales, because I know you like it when that is said in response to Lloyd's <laughs> comments, you were asking for one. So there you go. Um, and Lloyd, just real quick before I forget my thought as well, I, um, I just wanted to say that that makes sense when I found out about Sufism, the darkness behind it, nothing on the level that you've explained to me today. So I'd love to pick your brain on this further for sure. This can be a whole segment in itself. But when I thought, oh, these are the, the peaceful, loving, you know, like whirling, just remembering God and meditation and getting out of your head for a while and all that good stuff kind of thing. I realized that they are also the first ones to rally up troops for jihad in a state where Islam calls for war. The Sufis are the ones who would rally up and, and be the first ones to give themselves over to fight in jihad. So that to me, again, I could not put those, I was like these really peaceful, esoteric, mystical people who are like, God is love and love is God. And they turn to people like Rumi who says, come whoever you are, you know, fire worshiper, Jew, Christian, Zoroastrian, everyone is welcome in this caravan of love. And yet these same people are the ones who are rallying up to go and fight against the Gafir in infidel lands. Uh, I, I, I couldn't put those things together. Um, but yeah, real quick as well, just catch up on super chats. Thank 